you're here because you came to find out what's the difference with the iPhone camera that you have right now versus the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max that just came out. So, hey, that's what I'm gonna show you. This is a pretty in-depth comparison of all the pro-level cameras from the 15 Pro Max and all the way down to the iPhone 11 Pro. And we're gonna hit different modes like portraits, night shots, macro zoom, and more. There are some differences we can pull out and some are more obvious than others and some are more subtle, but I hope that one of the takeaways from this is that the cameras we have on our phones are already incredibly good. So let's just get right into this and start with some pictures that I took around the city walk at Universal Studios. And we're gonna start with this picture in front of Voodoo Donuts. Now this is not a portrait mode picture, but just straight out from the camera and none of these photos have been edited. And clearly, none of these are bad photos. There are subtle differences where the 15 Pro, 14 Pro, and 13 Pro take slightly warmer photos, and then the 12 Pro and 11 Pro are slightly cooler. You also notice that a softer depth of field is more pronounced with the 15, 14, and 13. And then the 13, 12, and 11, they all kept the hand that's holding the donut more in focus than the 15 and 14. Now we're gonna zoom in and take a closer look and the details of the lines and the frosting, they're the most pronounced on the 15 and 14, where the 12 and really the 11 don't retain as much detail as we zoom in. It also makes sense, the 15 and 14 are the 48 megapixel cameras. But let's go to our next example here, and this is a shot of my Nike Freak 5 sneakers from my review video for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. And are you really gonna have an issue with any of these photo results? You're not. Now, when you look at the pavement, the 12 and 11 are darker and bring a lot more contrast there. 13 is kind of somewhere in between, and then you have the 15 and 14 that treat the concrete with a lighter tone. But the shoe itself, it's hard to pull out any glaring issues between these phone cameras. Okay, let's look at a portrait photo from City Walk with Shauna, and I also had this one in my review. At first glance, the 13 Pro really pops the most here, right? And it even appears sharper, but not over sharpened. It was an overcast day, and I would say that the 15 Pro and 14 Pro captured the tone of the actual lighting from that day, where the 11 Pro just doesn't capture the nuance in color and detail as much. But as I kept looking at this, I think I'm leaning towards the 13 Pro in this photo. I mean, what do you think, right? Okay, now let's switch over to look at a nighttime portrait mode shot here with Shauna. And this time, you can really start seeing the difference in camera performance. The 11 Pro can't handle this properly, and then the 12 Pro is all right, but not on the level of the other three, and it really shows where there's a clear line where low light photography has made strides with the 13 Pro and higher. And again, the 13 Pro brings out a little more brightness here where the 14 Pro puts a little, kind of like a brighter haze that looks unnatural over the photo and then over sharpens it. And you'll see some of these themes with other 14 Pro photos. Now, if we look at the 15 Pro, this is a nice balance result for me, but the 13 Pro again brings more light it pops a little better, and I'm really torn between these two for different reasons, but I think I'm leaning towards the 15 Pro this time, but I won't say no to the 13 Pro either. I, I do want to say it. And none of these are bad, right? Well, okay, the 11 Pro, that's just too long in the tooth for the low light stuff, but I'm just picking out the differences that I can see, and you also may or may not agree. So please comment in the comments. That's what they're there for when you're looking at these comparisons. Okay. Now, since we're looking at nighttime shots, hey, let's get more into Apple's night mode feature and see how low can you go. Now, this is just a reference here, but this was shot in my hallway with very little light, just to give you an idea of where we're starting from. But now, let's go to the same picture with Apple's night mode on to reveal Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet Piggy Bank. Now, you can see here, the 12 Pro and 11 Pro are the grainiest with the most noise, with the 11 Pro having the hardest time. The 13 Pro does a great job here showing off the actual real yellow color of the gauntlet. The 14 Pro takes like a cooler approach and isn't as good as the 13 Pro, but the winner here for me has to be the 15 Pro because not only is it the image with the least noise, it's the only photo that was also able to properly represent the green soul stone and how green it really is. And yeah, all the MCU nerds out there that are saying, that's not the Soul Stone, that's the Time Stone in all caps in the comments. Well, it's not. This is the Infinity Gems based on the comics that were established over 40 years ago before y'all became Marvel experts and try to correct me in the comments every time I do something like this. Okay, I'll let that off my chest. All right, hey, you know, we've got so much more to show you, but let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Casetify. You've probably seen Casetify before with all their colorful and trendy cases in the past. Now here's some of their newest ones for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max with a Ninja Stars 
or you can see here the insides on an iPhone. They even made one with pictures of my wedding. Oh, plus they also have tons of collabs from Star Wars to the NBA or an artist like Crank. Now I have a special place for my Monsters Inc. Soli case that I bought for myself a long time ago, like it's still fuzzy. And they also are set on a mission to become the world's most protective tech accessories brand with their all new Ultra Bounce line of cases. So this is with legit drop protection up to 32.8 feet. That's about the same height as a T-Rex or four Yao Mings. Now Ultra Bounce is the next evolution of the protective case and it's made of six rugged protective layers with MagSafe support. But it's really all about these Ultra Bounce corners here, right? It's made of a super shock absorbent material and you can see that I did a drop test of my own just to show you. Here's how a ball bearing reacts when dropped on the Ultra Bounce material versus what some other cases are using. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I like Ultra Bounce. And yes, even I decided to trust it for myself and dropped my own new 15 Pro multiple times in different ways to see how it fared because I was only going to showcase Caseify if they delivered from an 8-foot drop, which is more than will ever happen to me in real life. Now, there's a link on screen or check out the link in the description box and click on Caseify.com slash Brian Tong to get 15% off on your order today iPhone 15 and 15 Pro cases are available now, so check it out on Casetify. Okay, let's get back to the camera comparisons, and hey, let's look at another night shot. Now, this is without night mode, and I wanted to see just how each of the cameras did with the iconic Safari Inn sign in Burbank. And now, if you were standing next to me when I took these photos, the iPhone that represented it the best out of the group was the iPhone 14 Pro. It nails both the color and detail of the neon sign. Now the 13 Pro is a little brighter, which is consistent with its results from other pictures. And then the 15 Pro nails the detail in the lights, but it just misses that pop in color of the 14 Pro. That is really what it looked like in person. Now the 12 Pro is cooler in temperature, and the 11 Pro has the hardest time handling the contrasting lighting conditions here. Okay, now let's move on to another feature. Let's check out the macro function in these photos when you want to get up real close to the subject. And we're going to visit this Kalamansi tree in the back of my place. And in case you were wondering, the macro feature started on the 13 Pro. So clearly in these photos, the 12 Pro and the 11 Pro don't have it as an option with Apple's camera app. So that's why they look like ass. Now, when you look at this comparison, we talk about how the 14 Pro tends to over sharpen sometimes, but I think it actually works to its advantage with this macro shot. The 13 Pro has a little harder time handling some of the details, while the 15 Pro kind of sits in between and does a very good job here as well. Now let's look at another macro shot just between the 15, 14, and 13 Pros, and we're getting up close and personal with my Poke from my favorite spot, Just Poke. And this is another example where I'm leaning towards the 14 Pro. You can even see on the other two how there's this green onion with a sesame seed sitting on top of it down towards the bottom. And it is blurry for both the 15 Pro and the 13 Pro, but the 14 Pro keeps it all pretty sharp. And as a macro camera, I'm liking what I'm seeing from the 14 Pro. And again, these are all great, but you know we're really trying to pull out the differences to, it's kind of fun to see all this stuff too. Now with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we know the 5X optical zoom is the new feature. So Let's just do a comparison here. And first, we're going to start off with this picture as kind of the standard established wide lens at 1x, no zoom at all. Okay, now let's look at all the different cameras and their best optical zoom available. And you can see how much the 5x optical makes a difference for the Pro Max. It's going to be a game changer for iPhone owners to compose different types of shots. And yes, I know I've talked about the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 10 times optical zoom that goes as far back as the S21 Ultra. And it is truly impressive, but this is what Apple has. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max can also go up to a 25 times digital zoom, while the 15 Pro can reach a maximum 15 times digital zoom. Okay here, really just one more picture to showcase since we're outside, and it's a shot of Riri Williams, better known as Ironheart from the comics. Now this is daytime where the light is harsher, but you can see generally all these cameras handle this very, very well. This was taken as a standard photo and not a portrait. And it is subtle, you have to look at these for a while, but you can see the 11 Pro doesn't quite have the same dynamic range, you know, a uh, difference between the brightness and darkness that others do in this example. It's, it's really subtle, but it's really the 15, 14, and 13 that have the better dynamic range. And if you look closely, the 15 Pro has a little bit of trouble keeping Ironheart's knee sharp and in focus compared to all the other cameras. 
but you also have to really constantly stare at these pictures to pull out some of these subtle differences. But again, if I'm looking at this and I'm saying which is the best looking photo for me straight from the camera, no edits, I'm leaning towards a 13 Pro for this one. So, you know, then it got me thinking, I haven't looked it up in a while, but let's just look at the actual specs of all the camera lenses for the iPhone 15 Pro all the way down to the 11 Pro. And you will see here some slight differences. Obviously the jump up to a 48 megapixel camera on the 14 Pro and 15 Pro gives you that 2X optical zoom quality option from Apple, but it's the 13 Pro's main wide camera with an F1.5 aperture that stands out when you look at all of these cameras. I mean, that's going to make a difference because the lower the aperture, the more light a camera can bring in and it also allows for a more dramatic bokeh effect. And that's that cool blurry background effect that separates the subject from a picture. I just wanted to make sure my mom knows what exactly I'm talking about. So the main camera for the 13 Pro has an F1.5 aperture and the main camera for both the 14 Pro and 15 Pro has an F1.8 aperture, which is higher than the 13 Pro's, but you want a lower number to let more light in and to get you more of that nice blurry contrast background. Now the 13 Pro's ultra wide is also lower with an F1.8 aperture compared to the 14 Pro and 50 Pro's F2.2 aperture for the ultra wide. And remember how consistently I've been talking about, you know, 13 Pro bringing a little more light and punch to the photos while keeping it sharp. It's something that some of you have already known, but until you really put it through its paces and stack these up from 11 Pro all the way to 15 Pro, even if it's a 12 megapixel camera, I would argue the 13 Pro is the best overall camera system that Apple has had from an image quality standpoint. And we know the camera is just one aspect of the phone. There's the processor, the design, the features on a phone like Dynamic Island and so much more that make upgrading worthwhile. But the whole purpose of this was to explore who might want to upgrade, especially if you're looking to improve your phone's camera. Now the 11 Pro owners and earlier, I'm just gonna say, hey, you're gonna get a huge upgrade here once you make the jump. Even 12 Pro owners, you're gonna get some great improvements, but after that, you can still argue that overall, the 13 Pro is pumping out some real quality images for the iPhone. Now with the iPhone 15 Pro, you're obviously getting other stuff, the new A17 Pro processor. You're getting a new photonic engine to help with image quality. You're also getting a lot of other benefits like the automatic portrait mode detection, which is amazing where you can switch between two subjects after the fact of the edit mode. And of course, the 5X optical zoom on the 15 Pro Max, that's gonna be huge. And then you got the different focal lengths that you can bounce between to give you a toolkit of basically seven different lenses. But this camera comparison, I think it might make you feel a lot better about the camera that you currently have and I will say this every time, if you are completely happy with the phone that you have right now, there is no need to upgrade. So that's my iPhone comparison. Hey, I would love to hear your thoughts and your observations from what you could see here as well. Put in the comments and I'll read them. And if you're lucky, I'll respond to them too. Even the mean ones, they're, they're, they're sometimes. But <laughs> this, is, this is really a first world problems video where we are comparing these cameras that are all still very, very good, and they're just hanging out in our pockets on our phones. That's incredible. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.